Michelle Gray and hello my boy Eric. Hello Elisa and Eric says hi mama. Oh he's over to the, your left? Yeah he often stands to my left side. Sometimes he'll come a little across to this side but he's usually my left hand man when we're doing this. Ah, does he ever pace? Yes. Oh God, yes, he's he a does. pacer. And his ener his energy um, recently has been very, very high vibrational, um, more than what I've experienced even a couple months ago. It just it's almost like I got my anxiety going on. I'll tell you oh, real yeah. quick. Something. <laughs> um, yesterday, my thirteen year old daughter may or may have not got into a little bit of trouble and had her cell phone taken away for a little bit. Ooh. And um, so my husband locked the phone down in his hobby room because there's uh -huh. a, like a keypad on there so that she couldn't touch it. And, you know, she had so many hours without it. So she comes upstairs to me yesterday. I was in between sessions. She says, mom, I can hear my music playing on my phone and I shut it off. She goes, I powered it down before dad put it in there and it's playing my playlist. And I said, are you sure? And she goes, yeah. She goes, wait, I'll go down one more time. She goes down and it stops. Okay, she did this three times. Oh my gosh. Was Eric was laughing hysterically. Oh, hysterically. Eric. He's, He's saying, ha ha, you can't have me. I'm your said, son. You can't have me. Ha <laughs> ha. He was teasing her. He was taunting her a little bit and playing her favorite songs. But what was so sweet was he actually played a song that meant a lot to her. When Aww. she got the phone back, it was sitting open on this one song. And she was kind of having a rough day yesterday. Aww. And she teared right up listening to this song. And I said, that was for Merrick. And she goes, I know. <laughs> Which song was so, it? Oh, I, it's, it's a band, BTS or something. A band no, that no, she no. Did too. So don't, oh. it's in Korean. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. It well, nice, I got so. two, um, <laughs> since I babysitted Harper, my nine month old grandbaby, I have two songs stuck in my brain. Do not play them. Okay. It's Baby Shark and I Poop. <laughs> I, mean, I Poop. I Poop. I Poop. I Poop in the morning. I Poop bed. <laughs> baby Shark. Do, 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 baby you shark. know it. Oh, oh it's my God. in my house all the time. Mommy, I know it. Da, 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 da. Oh, God. Okay. Yeah, I know. All right. It's well, <laughs> yes, it's awful. All right. Uh, well, okay. actually, one thing that's also very catchy is, let's go cluttering. It's a very special place to shop or something, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> enough of that. We will call in Natalie Holloway. I've had so many uh, requests oh, to call her Natalie in. Natalie Holloway. Okay. I, I, I don't really, know who Natalie I, I, Holloway even is. It's some, it's some girl who uh, got killed or is missing. Uh, she, she went on a vacation uh, to Aruba. And uh, mm. anyway, I, had, I don't know anything more than that about her. Maybe no. we've already found her. But, um, but uh, people have sent me questions. Okay. Uh, so, Eric, do you think you could bring sweet Natalie in? Uh, it, it, I mean, she is dead, but... Yeah, he's he's got sweet Natalie right here. Oh gosh! So the Natalie. first question was, is she dead? And oh, oh. Yeah. hi Natalie, how are you doing, sweetie? And she says hello, and um, I just want to describe what I'm getting here. Is okay. I've got a um, she looks to be about eighteen or nineteen years old. Mm -hmm. Um, she's actually standing here in what looks to be like hiking shorts and a white tank top mm -hmm. and she's got blonde hair, uh, not like a platinum blonde, but kind of a sandy color and she's got a little bit of a, a suntan, very sweet, um, hometown looking girl okay. is how I would describe her. I, I don't, I have never seen a picture of her. So, not okay. Neither have I, no. Okay. All right. Uh, well, thank you for coming. And maybe your parents will run across this and get some closure. Uh, I guess the first and most obvious question for you, Natalie, and feel free to answer or not answer these questions. How did you die? Can you describe in, in relative detail the circumstances of your death? So she's showing me um, 
an area and she makes me feel like there was a, um, a feeling and uh, there was somebody else that was with her or she was uh, hiking or walking with somebody else. A girl or a boy or? A girl. Okay. And what she's showing me is a scene right now and it looks like somebody that had gotten out of a taxi cab. I see an older style taxi cab and there's almost like a, a touristy type area or uh, um, it looks like people can go up and look out over a sea cliff or binoculars or something like that. Is there a restaurant or, or a, I mean, what, what do you mean touristy or is it a tour shop, a souvenir shop or? No, it looks like a, a clearing like somewhere somebody oh, okay. would go for photos. It has a uh, beautiful scenery behind it. Okay. And she's making me feel like she wants to spare detail as far as her body. Okay. Yeah, of course. But she's, but she's saying that she met the hands of the wrong people mm -hmm. at night. Uh, Cause she's showing me the sun going down and she got into a car or went in with somewhere and was taken to a second location. Wait, what does that have to do with, oh, the, did the car, are you saying that somebody from the taxi went out, there the two girls were in the clearing, and the person from the taxi took her or both of them or? I see it. See, I don't know what the taxi really has to do, and I'm just asking Eric right now, and he said that what I've seen is, two separate um so whoever had seen her had seen her earlier ah in the okay day. so um, oh, oh, oh the, the the person that later picked her up okay yeah. so you're saying the person now correct me if i'm wrong the person spotted you in the clearing area and yes. maybe stalked you and found you and then and yes. then picked you up later at night can you tell me about those circumstances where were you when you got picked up Now, I don't know, but I'm seeing a club, like some sort okay. of a, a club or um, a bar. Okay. And, like, I have no idea. Like, I've never even heard her name before because I don't watch the news or any of that sort of yeah. thing. Yeah, like most anymore. mediums. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I'm just trying to piece together what she's showing me. I'm getting a lot of visual, and I'm just kind of asking Eric for a little help here because her her spirit, I will tell you, she's very, very, very sweet. Um, Eric is helping her a little bit with the communication. It yeah. seems like her, um, not that her yeah, communication she, isn't clear, but yeah. he's, he's, she's giving me a lot of visual. Um, yeah, Natalie, Eric, if, if you could use words uh, as best you can, that would be awesome. It's us humans, you know? She just laughed and she says, I understand. Um, Eric is just saying that what we were seeing was what I'm explaining to everybody. What I'm seeing is that she was somewhere earlier in the day. She had been seen by, and I want to say a man, but every time I say man, um, she's giving a plural to it. Oh, okay. She's saying men. Men. Okay. Okay. So, um, there was somebody else that was targeted. Uh, do you happen to know if anybody else went missing with her? Or was it just her alone? I don't know. Do you have any idea? Okay. Mm -hmm. I, 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 think, I think that there were more than one person as a suspect, but I, I don't know. I, I only know that because of reading these questions. Okay. That okay. blog members. So, because it feels like men, she's saying men, um, and the taxi cab. Now, Eric, do you think that's because they were part of that? And he said, no, um, the taxi cab was, uh, so if we're looking at time frame, she was traveling with people. So there was a taxi cab, a group of people dropped off, um, a tour group, something of that nature. And whoever was amongst that group at that time was watching her. Oh. She seemed to have an idea. So her and whoever she was with may have gotten back into a taxi cab. Is that okay. what you're trying to say? She's just... In a roundabout way, Eric said that I'm talking in circles. He says the only point that was trying to be made here was that they had seen her earlier. Okay. And, and then, that 
right. she went missing from leaving somewhere and she's showing me of like having food and being out and then leaving and leaving with somebody one of the guys no she said that who she left with didn't it wasn't who hurt her okay was okay so just a friend a girl or a guy friend she says a guy okay uh all right um were you murdered i mean it's can, can you tell us you don't have to describe the body but basically how did you meet your fate strangulation drugs I, She says that she was raped and beaten. Oh. Were you drugged? The, the one person asked if you were slipped a drug and then maybe had a seizure. Or... Was her, do you know, was her body not found? I don't think it has been, yeah. Uh, no. I mean, the, the, from the questions, it doesn't seem like it. Okay, no, she she wasn't given anything, but and she says that she wasn't she wasn't really uh, intoxicated. She wasn't okay. like she had been drinking. She had been uh, this feels like a spring break trip or yeah. a okay. some sort of a celebration. It has the element of a celebration to like it. graduation celebration, maybe. Because that would be around the same age, right age. She's saying college, college. So she was starting college. Okay. All right. Something. About to start college. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so you were raped and beaten. Uh, so the beating, was it a blow to the head or strangulation that killed you or something else? She says it was blow to the head. Oh. With fist or a blunt object or anything? She's uh, showing me an object. Um, she's showing me pieces of wood. Mm -hmm. um, what she's showing me is really, it's, it's not pleasant, what I'm okay. seeing. Yeah. And it, uh, um, yeah. Yeah, as a, you were about Eric's age, really, I think. Oh, and and mm. yes, because um, the two of them are standing on the same level. Yeah. They're on the same, and uh, um, there's a connection in their age frame. Okay. Um, she understands, like, and, and I just want to make clear that as she's showing me this, this is not her sadness. Okay. So I, I myself... Um, I'm very empathic and I do feel and sense and, and, and I understand the purpose as much as, like she's just trying to get across that she doesn't want people listening to this and listening to how things happened and her death as something that she is suffering over or as anything at this point in time that she Good. doesn't understand because she said that this was very much something that um, although the circumstances weren't necessarily part of her path, it was all part of choice, but it was her time. And it, she did go in a way that she had contracted before this life to go. Oh. And she said that this is something that is going to be very hard for certain people to hear. Yeah, especially moms, you and me. Uh, it's just, and yeah. one who has lost a child, I, it's, oh gosh. Uh, okay, I'm going to name three names, uh, and I don't know if one or two or all of them are involved in some way in your death. Joran van der Sloot or brothers Deepak and Satish Kalpo? The energy is weighted heavier to the last two names. Really? Uh, but I will honestly say that the first name too, like I, there's a connection there, but she's not putting blame on them. Well, because it was part of a contract, but Eric, who, who raped her, Eric? 
Maybe she's reticent to say. Or you, Natalie, you can share if you want. Neither of them are saying. Neither really? of them are saying, no. Why won't you say? She said that there was more than one, that this wasn't one person okay. that raped her. Oh. All three, maybe? She said it was more than three. Oh, gosh. Okay, who uh, did the last, the, the blow to the head that ended your life? She said that there was two that, that beat her. Was she it, beat her was one of them Jürgen von, von der Schlut? No. Uh, Deepak Cowboy? Poe, rather? No. Satish Kalpo? It's really interesting because when you say the names, everything gets very quiet, but they're, she's, let me just ask Eric here what he, okay, so Eric is saying, um, and he's just kind of stepping in a little bit here, and he's saying that this was more about, it wasn't one person that did this. Mm -hmm. And he said that there's a responsibility in each one of the parties. And he said that there's also um, a responsibility in one, two, two people that know about this as well. So and whether are not coming clean. Yes. Not, okay. Because of fear and they're, or because they're yes. involved. Yes, because of fear, because of fear yeah. of what they know too. Um, he's also saying that this was a little bit of a spectator sport that got out of hand, that the yeah. intention of this was not to go to the level that it did. Well, why did somebody kill her? Why did they kill her? Eric said, um, and she's letting Eric go ahead. It's not that she isn't able to speak in this. And I feel like she really wants to get the energy of cross that. Okay. That she says, I'm not, I'm not meek. And, my, and she wants to say, I'm not meek. She wants. Oh, to okay. Be, yeah. Uh, right. Wants to let us know that. Um, okay. that Eric is just saying that if we were to throw a piece of steak in um, a bunch of dogs that were mistreated, mm. And he says there would be instincts that would come out in those animals that they would start tearing at the meat uh, and start attacking. Mm -hmm. And he says, and one of the dogs may turn on one of the other dogs and then start to kill that dog. Mm -hmm. If there was an instinct like that into it. And he says that this is not something that can be answered in the complexity of, you know, he goes, yeah, we can say yes or no, but he says, this is um, something that, there was alcohol, there mm. was dr drugs, mm. there was bad decisions, there was uh, laughter, there was um, people that had a little bit of um, anger towards girls, mm. anger towards not, not getting um, what they felt they wanted or being yeah. rejected or turned down from girls. Mm. And she was nice and she was... Um, she says, uh, I was not gullible. She said that she was in uh, having a lot of fun on a vacation and felt safe where she was and had absolutely no intention whatsoever or any thought to her that something was wrong until yeah. there started to be more men. And, and I'm also seeing um, and have seen this from the very beginning, a very leafy like area with... Okay. Um, uh, like I can see a tropical plant. I don't know what they call them, ferns or, okay. or yeah. you know, and, and the ground in that area. So um, Eric is just saying that she was taken to, said she was being taken for a walk and that walk turned into a lot more and then it became now what? And so one, two, three, four, five, so it feels like five were involved there, but there's another two that know something. That were there? Another two. 
Um, or just heard one of them bragging yeah, about it or something. Yeah, weren't necessarily there, but um, are privy to some of the information that they know that if somebody were to know that they've been keeping this all along, they would have themselves obviously into a lot of trouble as oh, well. Yeah. It, it, would those two be the Calpo brothers? Can you spell that last name for me? Sure. K-A-L-P-O-E. No. Okay. Eric, Eric says no. All right. So we don't really know. You're not going to share, and that's fine, the, the two people that actually ended your life. But it wasn't anybody we've mentioned so far. I just want to clarify, right? It, it wasn't actually them that did it, but they are part of it, is what she's saying. All right. And you're in Vondersloot. He also, he was involved in the rape, but not, not the actual murder. Mm -hmm. Did he do part of the beating? She said that there was a kick or two. Okay. Now, there's also... Um, that name that you read off to me there, there's something about that name too. And um, Eric just gave me the word disposal. So. Okay. One of them just help dispose of the body. I, I, yeah. The Calpo brothers, did they uh, dispose of the body? Like, I feel like these guys all know each other. Yeah. Okay. They're, No. Okay. No, they're both saying they're both saying no, but their their name is being highlighted. Okay. Uh, a, K, a K being highlighted. Was the area where this occurred near a hotel, or what? What landmarks can you give me? Off the beach, I don't know. Whatever. So there's a um, a restaurant bar, um, and there's a hotel that has a. A pinkish kind of hue to the brick. Okay. And on the one side, I am seeing um, kind of a, I don't want to say neon green. It kind of looks like a tacky, a tacky looking um, with the paint chipped off of it, to, um, not, like a turquoise. Okay. But more greeny, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and then the ocean across from that. Mm -hmm. That seems like the area that she had left from or had walked away from that area. Okay. Okay. okay um, where is your body? So she just showed me the body going from the side. Um, so where she showed me where the uh, fern and the greenery is and then there's uh, not sand it looks like it goes from water right into kind of a rock and then down into the water and she's out in the water okay will her body ever be found Yeah. Eric, Eric says that there's a very, very slight possibility that anything would ever be found. Well, is and it in a, the actual ocean or a tidal it's, pool? It's, it's not all together. It's not okay. all together. Well, well uh, but it's is it in, all together. is it in a tidal pool or, or something that the remains would kind of stay, or is it actually in the ocean ocean? She says it's actually in the ocean, but that it wasn't all. This like what I'm seeing is not pleasant at all. It oh, it's okay. Let's not. We in case the pair. I don't. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to explain it to kind of get the point. I know. Yeah. Being as you know what I mean. Graphic, but it, right. It wasn't right. just one place um, because she's showing herself being separated, like her energy being separated in different okay. spots, mm -hmm. but in the same general location, and it's wide and um 
widespread like the ocean. Yeah, and probably sea creatures probably has something to do with that, not the people, right? Okay, what, what about uh, the, the people? Were they tourists or were there some islanders involved in the rape and beating? Islanders. Islanders? Uh, oh, uh, only Not islanders? all of them. No, oh, so no. islanders and tourists. Okay, all right, got it. Uh, will it feels people... like that. Uh, it feels like I just want to say the tourists because um, Eric is saying that there were some drugs involved there. Mm -hmm. um, people meeting up with other people through drugs. Yeah. That there was a connection made through that. Okay. Um, will the people involved ever be brought to justice, Natalie? So this is one of the hardest things that is going to be difficult for, for everyone to hear because she said things like this, yeah. what we want to have happen as a human being is we want to see justice had, we want to see things come clean. Yeah. And she said, is there a possibility that this could ever come out? No. She says it's, it's, it's very difficult very difficult uh without my body being yeah. located yeah it's very difficult because she said there's a lot of theories that are had and um eric says the law enforcement themselves have some idea but to actually put charges in place to have something concrete um they just don't have what they need to be able to make charges to okay. hold somebody liable to, to have, he says, to have a trial. Were they involved in, the, in a cover-up? Or was anybody involved in, in covering up? No. no. So there was no cut, nobody suspected of cover, the guilty of no. cover-up, okay. No, there's no, no feel of that at all, no. And, and there's no. okay, and there's a were you sex trafficked and sold into sex slavery? Obviously, that's not the case, I guess. So. No. Okay, uh, but you knowingly went with the killer, killers, rapists, right? Yes. Were you wanting drugs also? No. Okay. No, this was more of. Um, she said this was all about having fun, uh, having a good time with your friends, meeting a cute guy, going for a walk. Yeah. She said, doing all the normal things that anybody else would do at my age. Yeah, sure. Going to, going to a special place or a resort place like that. And she said that by the time there was danger in sight, there was no place to go. Was and your dad? Oh. Sorry. She just, she also wants to say too that her, um, what she experienced, she was out of her body so fast. Oh, good. That's, that said, was my question. Yeah, good. Oh. Okay. She said, um, she goes, this is something that um, there are people that are going to be watching this that have children missing, that have, you know, that are going through these types of things and have these deep fears and hard things to get out of their minds and she says she doesn't want this to be about this because she wants her message to be understood that most times and eric is agreeing with this that when there's something to this degree especially with a, a soul contract or anything like that there's something to this degree the spirit slams right out of the body that you're pulled right out of the body to not, to not experience the pain, um, yeah. the pain and the suffering of that. The so she fear, wants to yeah. make that very clear. Well, thank yeah, God. And understood. Yeah. Uh, how are you doing? Natalie, are you at peace? She said yes. And she's talking about um, animals and that she spends a lot of time with animals and Eric's just saying that she um, she helps she helps animals 
spirits or helps animal spirits evolve. Oh, she's, she's very much part of animals. She also, um, there's a special animal that she was alive. I feel like a little dog that may have been parents or somebody close in their family that is now passed. Okay. And she's talking about that little animal being with her. Oh, okay. Well, maybe they'll provide some validation. What was your crossing over like? She said it was instant. It was instant light. Um, she said that it was uh, very calm, very peaceful, very warm. She said it would. It felt like a, a injection of something warm was running through her. Okay. And she's she's saying Papa, so she had a Papa that okay. had passed. Okay. Well, do you have any messages for your mother? She wants to let her mom know that she hears what she says and she can feel her pain. And she said that, you know, every time that you think of me, she said, it's not your, your heart does miss me. And I understand but that, but that's me that's with you every time. And she's showing me herself in the car and a lot of tears. There's a lot of emotion. So from the mom. That her, yes, from the mom. And she said that her mother has an ability to be able to sense her spirit, but doesn't recognize for sure whether that is her. But it's like as if the memory yeah. comes back of her. It triggers the memory. Uh, yes. And it's her body recognizing the spirit of her daughter as well. Okay. So it brings on a lot of emotion. Yeah. So she just kind of wants to put that out there and, and um, and she says, uh, she says, you guys are so sweet. She goes, you guys are just so sweet. Like she's being very thankful for saying this because that that with her mom, that is opening up something with her right now. With, Almost like she's with Natalie. Uh, um, yes, with Natalie. Okay. Like she like she's like real interested now. Oh. She's talking about her family. You know, like she's right in there. Well, have you tried to communicate with uh, any of them? With your parents, for example? And if so, how? <sighs> Eric could probably teach you some little tricks. I wouldn't he do all of them if I were you. He already said that. Already oh, said no, that. really? Oh, my um, God. Okay, so she said that the first thing is that there's a barrier there because my body's not found. Yeah. And she said, without my body being found, she says the subconscious, all the things that um, are not completely accepted because she says, yeah. no, no, no mother will ever say my child is gone yeah. or my child is gone unless they know for sure. Yeah. And she says, my mom, and she's just bringing it back to her mom being in the car. And she's just saying that her mom, I don't like saying this, but her, her mom, I think her mom feels that she is gone. That yeah. She knows that she is gone because she said that that communication um, between a mother and a child, you know this, yeah. communication between a mother and a child, you know that communication is still there, that, that love is still there. Oh, yeah. Oh, she's saying that there's a lot of gray area with it because there's still so much confusion around her death. And um, has this, do you have any idea of the time frame? Because I don't feel like it's been all that long. Like I'm feeling five years know. ago. I don't know. I think it's in the mid 2000s or a little bit later, maybe. Um, like, like maybe 2012? I don't know. Maybe earlier. Okay. It seemed like it was. Anyway, uh, yeah, and confusion and that gray area, that's such dense energy for spirits to go through. But Mama, if you're listening, she is still the same. She just doesn't have a body. That's it. And she's living in a parallel dimension. But she's with you, I'm sure, most if not all that, of the time. And that was for her, she, her mom to understand 
that when she feels that intense emotion, when she thinks of her to, to, she said this, this would be very hard for her to understand and accept, but again, to, to feel that it's her spirit that she's feeling, okay. not just a, a, a memory that she's considered it's actually her spirit haunted by that. It is her spirit. Yes. Okay. Uh, did the Calpo brothers, wait, did the Satish, no, Calpo brothers, tell the truth when the police questioned them about Natalie? No. Okay. Did uh, Jorn van der Sloot have anything to do with drugging or, and or raping or killing any other women in, in Aruba or elsewhere? Because the name Stephanie Flores come, comes up as a possibility uh -huh. in Peru. Okay, so Eric's, Eric's just saying that um, there's validation that he was in the same area or something that... Stephanie was in? Uh-huh. Eric said that there is a connection. Um, he's not saying that he killed that, she, that he killed Stephanie. He's saying that he was in the same area. Are you alluding to that? Yeah, just black and white. Come on. Did he rape or kill or harm her in any other way or with any other woman? Eric's saying that there was somebody else. He's not putting claim. He's, he's not really saying yes or no. And uh, again, I feel it's like an involvement. Okay, so it's it was like an too... involvement because he doesn't feel like it's just him. But, but Joran was involved, though, but with another person. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Natalie, have you had any, uh, well, was, this is a question from a blog member. Was it part of Stephanie Flores' contract to help get Joran convicted in Peru? I didn't know he was. She's just saying, and Eric's also saying too, that um, there are things that happen, there are byproducts of it, but um, she's not taking any responsibility and okay. saying, saying no, that that wasn't. And, and I'll be honest, I, I don't know, because um, Eric says there was somebody else. Okay, somebody else was more to blame? And, and somebody else was part of this. Okay. So, all right. Um, and that's what I feel because when you go to answer like that, um, often what Eric will do with me is if there's something else to it, he'll kind of sit there. <laughs> oh, and, okay. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so he's like a dot, dot, dot pose. <laughs> All right. But but he says that there is somebody else. Um, so if this man was convicted in Peru, I. Yeah, he said that there is somebody else that's involved with it. Okay. Um, Natalie, have you had any contact with Stephanie for us? She's saying that she's not, she has not yet. Okay. Here's a kind of a long one here. Uh, I was wondering what role, if any, John Ludwig, oh, a new name, played in the cover up. Supposedly, uh, Jorin Vandersloot confessed that he killed Natalie to John and asked Lud, Lud Ludwig to dig up the body and cremate the remains. Uh, but then I think he recanted that. I don't know. So, can John, you repeat that? Can you repeat John that Lud to me again? Yeah, I was wondering what role, if any, John Ludwig, and then she says Ludwig, uh, played in the cover up. Supposedly, Vandersloot confessed to John that he killed Natalie and asked John to dig up the body and cremate her remains. 
Well, that's a, totally falls against anything we've talked about here. So, if it, well, Eric just said no, and that's why I, I wasn't quite clear as to what okay. you were, what it was saying. But Eric's shaking his head and saying no. Did Vandersley give a false confession? Because it seemed like uh, I heard it from one of these questions that he confessed and then recanted it, or and, and confessed to an another murder and then recants it or something. I can't remember. I, I, I'd like to, you don't know if he was on trial or something because I don't know. He's saying that he, there was something that he had some sort of statement that he had given. Mm hmm He just keeps saying no. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Uh, all right, could you please ask Natalie, what would she say to trusting people like her as far as reading the energies of someone who is a killer or somebody who wants to hurt them? In other words, a warning to other young women to be careful when trusting a stranger, to read the signs or read the energy to avoid being a victim of a terrible crime. So, Natalie, what is your advice to young women like my brush with the serial killer man my radar went boom 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 bing 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 oh i wouldn't believe all right she said that um a lot of times when when people are having fun um you're on vacation or you're you're in a situation where you least expect something like that to happen she said that leaving anywhere by yourself or with somebody that you don't know. She says, when you're having a good time, sometimes that intuitive meter can be yeah. in the background. Oh, yeah. And she said, so if you are one that doesn't fully trust your own intuition, she says, it's always good measure to travel with somebody, to always have a partner, mm -hmm. um, to, not, to not go wandering off into places. And she says at any time, and she says also to be aware, be aware of your surroundings and be aware of anything unusual that's going on. Yeah. Um, well, you know, you're on freaking vacation to celebrate going to college and stuff. That's the last thing you're going to think about. It's just out of the realm of possibilities. Was it your spiritual purpose that, you know, what happened to you? He obviously said it was a contract, so obviously it must be a yes. But if so, yeah. what was the spiritual purpose? What were what were you there to learn or teach? She said that she, her soul, she came into this life knowing that her life was going to be short. And although as a human being, she had aspirations, she had plans, she had dreams, but she came in as a teacher. Mm -hmm. And a lot of what she is teaching is happening right now within her very own family, which has to do with the relationships. Um, she also said too that there's there's a lot to be said for um, what's happening to. Uh, she says, unfortunately, this has put a lot of fear into people too, and she says that from fear is always something that can come better from it. And she said that there's a lot of opinions about what has happened. There's a lot of opinions about um, what happened to me. And she said, but the truth of it is, is that this is all about each one of us understanding that we are able to overcome something that is of such a large tragedy. Um, she says, watching a, a, a young life being taken early, not even knowing where that young life is or knowing if that life is being tortured somewhere. And she says, the thoughts of what my family, my friends, and those have had to go through, she says, is unbearable pain. But she says that they will be able to overcome this. And she said, so the biggest teacher goes into those that are observing what's happening and how each person takes that into their own life. And basically you're, you're teaching us that 
Even the worst tragedies can be overcome. We do have that power. Is that right? That's right. And she said that mine is one of many. And she says that the focus that was on mine, because there are people going missing all over the place. Yeah. And she says the focus that was on mine was a young, she says American. I'm assuming mm -hmm. she was an American girl. Yeah, I don't know. I think so. A young American girl, a beautiful girl with a whole life ahead of her, gone to celebrate with her friends and goes missing and yeah. never seen again. And she said, so this isn't just about the, the light being shined on just myself, but she says also the light to be shined on people all around this world that go yeah. missing all the time. And she says, my... And this kind of makes sense with what she's feeling um, with her energy of, of shrinking back. She wants this to be about something bigger, not just about her. A trial, and her case. Yeah. Her case. Yeah. Cause she says, and Eric's just pointing out to that. He says, you know, running through all the facts and running through everything is not going to change. No. What, is happening right now and he says this is about understanding that there there's this is still existing basically he says there's a family that's still going through this right now yeah. there are friends that are still going through this right now and a lot of pain but he said that there are people all over the world going through this and and that's what she said the biggest thing to to um to want to get across is to put attention to this and um, she says that the media does focus on certain things that yeah. get our fear, get our, you know, get our fear going. Rolling. Well, what, do you have a message for what you want your parents, your family, or the collective as a whole to do? She's talking about support. And she says, support in the fact that when somebody goes missing, she goes, you know, there's a lot of focus that happens in the very beginning. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of focus that happens. Um, yeah, all these things, like she's saying specifically yeah. with her family. But she's talking about, um, for anyone that is going through this, um, she goes, the same as with the death of a child. Like she's, mine. I mean, that's a tragedy I had to overcome, yes. too. Yeah. Yes. And she's saying that this is, you know, it, it still is the same heartbreak. It might be a different scenario, yeah. but the heartbreak is deep and endless for yeah. a parent yeah. and for their family. And she's just saying that be there for it, to do what you can, whether that family needs support now or later, you know, and another thing too, um, she's just saying that it, it's, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay to stay and to think that, you know, to have hope to find her. It's okay. Mm -hmm. And she wants to let her parents know that this isn't about taking away your hope. Eric says it's a lot about truth too. Okay. Were you here to learn? I'm just going to ask some quick questions because we're almost out of time. Were you here to learn anything this life? She said that she was able to have a lot of accomplishment in her life. Friends, mm. uh, relationships, trust. She was a free spirit. Mm. She had a lot of joy. And she said that this life, uh, she didn't come into this life with huge battles to overcome. Mm -hmm. She came into this life to be the free spirit that she was and to experience. Okay. And she yeah. wanted to experience, and, and she's also saying that her soul had felt she had had a lot of other experiences. Okay. Do you have any regrets? I think I know the answer to this one. Well, she says, walking away with a stranger would be my first regret. Oh, yeah, but she said, course. she goes, I, I could think of better ways that I could have gone. But 
she goes, everything does have its purpose. Yeah. Uh, can you share another life that may have most influenced your one is Natalie Holloway? She's showing me um, herself being a phys ed teacher uh, and uh, basketball. Oh, and, okay. Okay. And um, I, I want to say we're looking at like 1950s. No, I knew you were going to say that. Okay. Yeah. I can see her in like a old timey looking, and I say this old timey, I'm saying like, She's got like a skirt on. Oh yeah. But she's yeah. got this shirt. Okay. And she's got her hair up and a big old whistle. A oh yeah. Hard whistle. So I, I don't know if Natalie was into sports or anything else like that, but I don't know. Um, she's just saying that uh, she was very much the expression of her in this life as this phys ed teacher okay. carried on into this life as Natalie. And this feels like the life right prior to the one that okay. she has now. Can you share anything new about you that we really just don't know about? For example, uh, Mad Madame Curie, I think it was, I can't remember, said she had this favorite teddy uh, bear that she sewed in the inside surface of her skirt. So. She popped off little, um, tabs she used to like there was like a little game like you know you make a wish when oh you yeah somebody a, a tab she said that she always had it in her head that she, when she would see a little tab or a um what was like a um uh like you know those how, how do i explain this i can see her sitting at a table as a little kid and she says that they play games like um i love you if i can get this whole thing ripped off the bottle oh yeah do you know what I mean? So she was. Is it like uh, it. like you, you bend it until it breaks? I love you. I love you not. Yeah. I love you. I love you not. I love yeah, yeah, you yeah. like that. Oh, okay. Like, okay. But, but she's showing me like um like the top of a pop can or um like a, a beer bottle. Okay. Not the beer bottle, but you know what I mean, like ripping off the, the little the tab and handing it to them. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, any other messages for anybody, including society, anybody? Or a member of your family, just, you know. She just she what what she really wants to say, and she says, "I think this is the most important thing, the biggest thing to take home." And it's a very simple thing. And she says, "Love your family, love your loved one, your loved ones, love them. Tell you tell them that you love them, and don't don't waste your time." Don't waste your time with people really and be in the moment. She yeah. says, put the cameras down, put the yeah. phones down, put the computers down and really look into your loved one's eyes and say, Hey, I love you. Yeah. Cause and, it could be the last day. It could be the la last day you see them. You know, I remember my last day with Eric and I wish I'd, I'd I could have done something so much more meaningful uh, that day. But um, any particular messages to, I don't even know if you have siblings or any other family member you want to give a shout out to. Beside the usual, I love you. Of course you do. She just ran through. Um, she's got a, a brother. Okay. Because she says, I love you, bro. Mm. Um, she's also somebody that she was very close with has had a baby recently. Oh, okay. And she wants to say congratulations on the baby. Okay. Um, uh, Monica, she's giving me the name Monica. Okay. So I don't know if that's the baby or that's the, that's the name we got. Well, I sure don't know. How about uh, Eric? Do you have anything to ask? And of course, Michelle, do you have anything to ask before we close? And that's it. I just want to, I mean, I want to just tell Natalie she's awesome. Yeah, and I could tell. Oh, God. Beautiful spirit. She's very, very sweet. And um, 
like my energy is very, very calm right now. And I can feel that from her. And um, I also want to say thank you to Eric too, because Eric, Eric's been doing a lot of translating for Aww, me today. Oh, thank you, Eric. Without me figure out. So, but Eric's just saying thank you. And he just wants to say, um, when you said about the last day being more meaningful, mm. and Eric's just, he says, every moment you made with me, mama, was meaningful. I try. He just wants to make sure you know that. Oh, that's sweet. Yeah, and I okay. love you, of course. Well, thank you, and thank you, Michelle. Thank you, Natalie, thank for you. coming forward. It took a lot of courage. I'm so glad that thank you were you. out of your body when all that happened, and maybe nudge your parents if you think they're okay with this. Uh, nudge them to the video, and and maybe Eric, you can you can team up with her to help communicate with her uh, her parents or anybody else in the family. He says, "Will do, Mama." We'll do. Okay. At least says thank you. You bet. And you guys check out Michelle Gray's site at healingarts.com. Uh, is it the healing arts? No, it's healing the, arts. The, the no. healing. The healing. H, H and then dash dash A R T R S. Dot com. Well, I, I put it in the, the title healing, page of the YouTube, yes. so don't worry about the healing it. Healingheart.com. Yes. Right. Course. Right. <laughs> oh, there's no S at the end of the art, right? No, it's just the, the healing, healing art. So the healing heart. T H E H E A L dash A R T dot com. Yes. Yes. This is hard when you're old, man. <laughs> oh God. All right. Bye. Love you guys. Bye. Love you. Bye. Bye. <laughs> bye.